Hey yo, it's your boy Spiro, aka Darth Spirit on. Read the headband, destroy him. It's your boy GGP, aka Greek God Papadon. And you're watching the new 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 force order. NFO podcast, baby. When you're NFO, you're NFO for life. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, Jedi, Siths, and everything in between, to another exciting, action-packed, news-stacked, but always totally jacked edition of the new Force Order. For life. Podcast. It's a Star Wars podcast where... The three of us, the New Force Order, come to you in a galaxy far, far away, and we give you nothing but the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Two of us look in the camera when we talk, and one of us likes stroking Hank McCoy's shaft. You be the judge of who's who. I am one-third of your host. I am a pro wrestler. I am a multi-time champion in a galaxy far, far away. Current heavyweight champion in three promotions, if you will. I am your boy, GGP, a.k.a. Greek God Papadon. And alongside with me, I have a vindictive, malicious, sadistic, tiffed off Sith Lord and a pretty witty kung fu grip having thunder-stealing medical droid. Boys, smarten these marks up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Dark Lord of the podcast, the Sith Ari, the Rampaging Revan Kiss, the Butcher, your boy Spiro, a.k.a. Darth Spirit on. And I am smarter than 2-1-B, more technical than FX7, the God of Stealing Thunder, and the guy whose penis is strong enough to rip the ears off a gun dark. Dr. Destroyo, <laughs> Alex Arroyo. <laughs> oh, that was a good oh, one, Doc. Man. On the oh, fly, man. boys. On the fly. We're calling on the fly. There we go. Walk and talk, kid. Listen to me. We won't go wrong. Best so, in the There we go. Back in my day, they were hanging off the rafters. Um, <laughs> ding. And we got paid $25. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for your time and your ears. We have a lot to talk about tonight. A lot of news has dropped. Like an anvil in a Looney Tunes cartoon, it has dropped. What's going down, you may ask? Well, the new Force Order is here to tell you all the latest about Star Wars. And if you don't know what Star Wars is, I'm sorry about your damn luck. Because you're missing out on the greatest franchise, Baba, in all of movie history. So, where do we begin, gentlemen? Do you guys want to take a, a topic oh, real quick? Well, I'm going right for the throat, baby. Because oh, I'm, na- I'm naming this episode the Boba Fett Bonanza. We got somewhat confirmation from multiple sources that our boy, Tamira Morrison, is playing Boba Fett in season two of The Mandalorian. And to add a cherry... On that Sunday that you just delivered, Doc, he's also playing Captain Rex. He's going double time? He's doing double duty, which means he's making a lot of scuttle. Scuttle! Man, you know what? I am excited about this, and I wouldn't have done it any other way, man. They had to bring him back. It makes the most sense. Not only for fucking continuity, nostalgia, and all that. It just... You know, when they do shit like this, it just means so much more, man. And to have the original badass in that role, you know, it's just, yeah, like you said, man, the cherry on the fucking tip, tippy top of that Sunday. 
Well, listen, it doesn't stop there. Oh, no. The plot thickens. Ooh, what happens? There's more. There? Oh, there's more. Uh, the female actress that you may or may not know, she's been in a lot of roles. If you see her face, you're like, oh, yeah, I know her from so and so. Katie Sackoff is. Sackoff? Sackoff. Not like you, who's a jackoff, <laughs> but. Uh, Katie Sackoff is rumored to be playing Bo Katan in season two of The Mandalorian. So let's look at the let's look at the laundry list of people who are allegedly in this season. We have Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano. We have Tamora Morrison as Captain Rex and as Boba Fett. We have uh, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Where? Boba yeah. Fizzle. Uh, for shizzle, my zizzle. You know, you know why uh, Snoop Brain, ca- uh, you know why uh, Snoop Dogg carries an umbrella during the rain? Uh, for drizzle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we got uh, Ahsoka Tano, Rosario Dawson, right? We have Tamora Morrison as Boba Fett and as Captain Rex. We have Katie uh, Sackoff as Bo Katan and. We, we, they haven't. No actress has been named, but allegedly they're going to have Sabine Wren from Rebels in this season as well. Now, that is a lot of cameos, a lot of people in live action. Everyone is salivating and creaming in their shorts. Boys, what do you think of this all-star list of people in season two? Okay, I have a question first. Didn't they finish filming this already? We're still getting like, oh, this person's uh, allegedly playing this person. Yes. In, in this year. I don't understand. Did they film this all completely yes. in secrecy? Yes. And now they're just releasing shit? Well, no. It's, it's being crazy. Leaked. It's being leaked. It's not being crazy. confirmed. But Nothing has been confirmed by Star Wars Disney, Lucasfilm, nothing. Okay, the only thing that's been confirmed is that Taika Waititi is going to be directing a film, co-writing it with the chick from 1917. I forgot her name. And this other chick who did uh, Russian Dolls, Headland or whatever her name was, yeah. Leslie Headland. Uh, the believe fucking, her name. Uh, the, the rapist enabler extraordinaire, yeah. Yeah, the uh, personal assistant to the rapist yeah. enabler extraordinaire. Allegedly. But also, no, he, he, well, she was his assistant for a year and he was a rapist enabler extraordinaire. So the, the only thing that's alleged is what may she be bringing to the table. And that's an all female uh, centric role or show, excuse me, an all female centric show. Yo, but we, here, this is what I hear. Really. But Go bro, on. do we really want a fucking a Star Wars show where 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 all we see is a bunch of women making fucking sandwiches and shit, doing fucking laundry? Okay, I don't folks. See that okay, shit, folks. Man. It's uh, it's been a ride. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's uh, Dexter's dying dude. in the neck right now. <laughs> Has some crazy feminist with hey, his Bro, okay, look, man. First of all, I want to say this. I want to apologize for cutting you off. And I'm just kidding. The reason why I said that is, and I, I should have said something earlier. I got some emails, personal emails. That, uh, apparently, they did not go s- straight to the to the uh, show e- email b- because I'm sure I, I would have been told about it. But there are people who are uh, angry and a little bit offended and bothered by what I consider one of the most glorious episodes of course i'm talking about the revenge of the fifth episode and uh i just want to say i want to apologize for not no don't you oh, dare hold on, apologize hold on. i want to apologize for I absolutely to, nothing I wanna, listen I this wanna, is an equal opportunity uh, show everybody gets hated on from a to z male female non-gender gender fluid I, doesn't matter who you are what you I are agree. it's yeah. all in good it well maybe not good depending on your opinion well, but it's all in the name of entertainment and comedy i, I brother i agree with you so please do not apologize for what well, you say or who well, you are 
there are certain people that I must apologize to. I must apologize to people like Homeboy88. I must apologize to people like Chuchi Figueroa, who's also kindly always getting the fucking yayo. I must apologize to guys like that. Well, hold on, it's time out. You don't have to apologize to Chuchi. Oh, Chuchi's been busting your balls about a mug that I he allegedly it. ordered, got right. his money back, and he's still telling you to freaking send the mug after he got his money back. So he needs to get his head on straight. Chuchi, well, stops getting high on your own supply. And if you don't like it, tough shit, number one. Number two, if Homeboy 88's upset, what I will do is I will fly to California myself. Tijuana. I will rent the rapid <laughs> Tijuana. Oh, no, not Tijuana. He lives, he's in L.A. So I'll fly to California myself, wherever it is, L.A., yeah, South, bro, South, SoCal. I will go on the highway, and I will run his ass over while he's selling those goddamn oranges. I will hit him with a Mack truck that I will rent or a budget rent a truck, whatever the case may be, to teach him a lesson. Look, it's all in good fun, plain and simple. Homeboy88, we did not forget you. You're getting your T-shirt, so and you're getting a free shirt because of your wittiness. So enjoy it. We've made you famous. You've gotten the rub from the NFO, and now you think you're over, but you'll never be more over than the NFO, brody. So just know your role and shut your mouth and carry our bags when we tell you to, and then maybe you'll get the sloppy seconds on the rats, brother. Woo! Oh Anyhow. man, yo, you must not want any fresh squeezed fucking orange juice, bro. <laughs> but can I finally explain why it is that I must apologize to these two guys and listeners like them? I apologize. I'm apologizing because I'm sorry that I wasn't the more vicious and more fucking uh, vile. I apologize. You got us. You know, I'm sorry that, you know, if I drove anybody to contemplate, you know, jumping off the fucking di- the, uh. the fucking Death Star, I'm, I'm, I'm apologize that I didn't go the extra mile to make you do so, you know. So, if your feelings were hurt last fucking Tuesday or last Thursday when this dropped, you shouldn't be tuning in to the show. This show is is for men and women, okay, not fucking boys and girls, or okay. Snowflakes. Or snowflakes, especially not for fucking s- snowflakes. So, from the bottom of my heart, fuck you, fuck your fucking <laughs> mothers, eat a big fat fucking coronavirus infected dick. Okay. Ooh, those are bad. And the show goes on. Anyway. There you go. I love the fact that I fell uh, for the oldest trick of the heel book uh, where he says, I'm sorry. And I'm trying to tell him, don't say I'm sorry. But then he hits me with the heel fucking swerve. Very good. Very good, Spiro. Thank you. Thank Listen, you. I want you to read those emails tonight on air. We're going to touch base on everything. Nothing is sacred. No one is safe. You're all going to catch the wrath of the new Force no, Order. I got an because idea. Let, okay. I got an idea. Well, let's, let's face facts. The yeah. facts is these people, they get mentioned on our show. Okay? Out of the kindness of our black hearts. They hear their names. They think they're over. They get all happy. And then they then they email us or they'll call us or message us behind the scenes about, hey, when's the show dropping, Jabroni? Excuse me. What? Jabroni? Who are you talking to? I don't know you. You don't know me. So calm down. Know your role. Sit back. You'll get the show when you get it. And you'll enjoy it. And if your name is on the list of people that get mentioned during the show, kudos to you. Because then three more people that listen to us know your name. It's not cheers exactly, where everybody man. knows your name. Listen. But we'll get there eventually. I'll put it to you like this. One of the fucking emails came from one of my aunts, okay? And you know what? She knows who the fuck she is. Hold on no, a second. No, I'm going to say it here. I don't give a fuck because wait, 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 you know wait, wait, what, wait. man? But listen, you got to step up your game. You need to get emails from your brother and your mother. Yeah. Like, Doc, you get you well, get stuff from your aunt. You're, you're, you're level B. You're like a B-plus player now, like Daniel Bryan. Oh, man. Oh, I will man. step it up. Trust me. Okay, but, uh, all right. Let me, do me well, a favor. I'm gonna say this, Tell me though. the emails right now. We're skipping the no, news right now. We're going straight no, into no, the no, no. No, I got an, an idea. I think that we need to start... A new segment, make it maybe make it a fucking ex- exclusive, and it's gonna be a fucking mailbag s- segment for these special emails. But I'm just gonna say this, okay, to my aunt. <laughs> Fuck you. 
<laughs> oof, ah, go fuck yourself, you oh, stupid, shit. ignorant bitch, okay? You know, you don't fucking email me telling me how I'm supposed to be talking on my show because you know what? I'm not s- sending you a fucking email telling you how to fucking raise your fucking stupid drug addict fucking son, you stupid cunt. Fuck you. And mom, I'm sorry if this offended you, but fuck that bitch. And you deserve a better sister. Fuck her. Anyways. Oh, Christmas you, is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Spoken in true Sith fashion. Listen, man, a, a lot of people have, have, have been asking for the fucking dark side to come out. Well, you know what? Here we you are. Know, here well, listen, we are. Now to go down too personal with the family issues, we'll leave that aside because the fans don't deserve that. They don't need to hear the inner workings of what's going on with your family. But the other emails that you Nothing got from the fans, on, you know? no, listen, whatever. They don't need to know. We never let the truth get in the way of a good story, number one. Number two, they don't need to know. So, number three, Doc look in the camera. And number four, <laughs> <laughs> number four, the other two emails that you got, please read them on air. I want to hear them right now. Right now. We're not doing any more news. Well, yeah. I want to hear those emails right now from whoever it is. If it's Chuchi, if it's no, 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 it's Homeboy, not, it's not, if it's, it's John not. Smith, if it's Bail Organa, I don't care who sent you the emails. Read them right now. I want to hear them. Ella, it's, come it, on. It's not from Chuchi. It's not from Homeboy. I don't care. I'm it, just it, saying these emails. I'm gonna save these emails. Okay, okay. We're gonna we're gonna make money with 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 these. All right. Trust, Trust me. Okay. So I trust you. We will we'll have to make these fucking peasants pay for everything, goddamn jabronis. Anyway, so here we go. The following announcement has been paid for by the new 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 force order. Hey brothers, yo, what up, man? I like the shirts. I like your shirt. Like my shirt too. You like my shirt? Yo, let them know where they can get these. Turn around. Oh, 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 oh. You can get them at the. Official New Force Order on Facebook, at NFO Podcast at Twitter, new for, at New Force Order on the gram of Insta, and you can check us out on www.newforceorder.com or send an email to newforceorder at yahoo.com. Or PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, whatever ready. Imperial credits are no good here. Buy the shirt. Buy the shirt. Buy the shirt! We were talking about this, right? We were talking about all these people who are going to be on season two of The Mandalorian. Oh, Doc just fell off. Oh, man. What's the matter, Doc? You want to be everyone's friend? It got a little too heated for you? Huh? What's the matter, Doc? See what happens when you don't look into the camera of your computer and you don't make sweet love to your computer with your face? Gets angry. It shuts off on you. Johnny Five's not alive, Doc. Anyway, so as we continue... We mentioned people who are on the show, right? Bob Chapek, who is the CEO of Disney, alongside Bob Iger right now, says there will be no on the season two of Mandalorian. And no that what? No Delays? delay. Oh, okay. Good. This coronavirus has not affected it at all. It's excellent news. He makes it clear that with the second season finishing principal photography before the coronavirus took hold across the world, the second season will revive on time. So, to me, that's awesome. Listen, Doc, you got to look into your camera now because it's this getting angry that you're not. Me. It's not. It's because you're not making sweet love to your camera with your face. It's getting mad at you, shutting off on you. Johnny Five is not alive in your house, brother. It's brutal right now, brother. All right. So what I just said to the uh, professional podcast host, not the unprofessional like you. Um, after he told his next of kin to go jump off a cliff, was that um, that uh, Bob Chapik, the CEO of Disney, stated that the Mandalorian will not 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 be delayed and will come on Disney Plus as scheduled. You guys see Fuck that you, news? Coronavirus. Exactly. Mandalorian yes. is so strong all day long. So, Ray Park teases a return in season two as Darth Maul of the Mandalorian. 
So here's the article. It's from where are we now? By Movie Web. Not sure if they're a legit source. I think yeah, they, are. they are. They are. Right? They yeah. said is Darth Maul actor Ray Park teasing some sort of appearance in Mandalorian season two? This seems to be the implication for fans reading to some recent social media activity. Uh, oh, what happened was he posted this Sith symbol. You guys see it? Ooh. Hold on. I thought that was the uh, the the the, the dark black sun, sun right? Yeah, black yeah. Sun right. This black sun symbol, and, it's, and he and he and he uh, added the verbiage or he the text to the tweet that said, "This is the way." No shit. So, I'm thinking they're gonna do something with because obviously he's dead around this time, but I'm thinking they're gonna do something with the history of the black saber of the dark saber oh, because. Black saber, maybe? Because you have Maul, you have Bo Katan, you have Sabine, right? You have uh, your your abuela's favorite actor, John Esposito, John Carlo Esposito, uh, with the saber now. So there's the lineage right there. You know what I'm saying? So there could be flashbacks, you know, within this within this uh, series. I don't know what else, how else he fits into the equation, but hell, that's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, maybe flashbacks. Yeah. Clever editing. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but if they're going to do a flashback, do they really need to pay the money to have Ray Park come? Yes. I mean, I, I, yes. I, 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 no, listen, what I'm saying is this, right? I'm all for it. So if they're going to have him come back, it's going to be more than just a, a flashback scene where they normally show a side profile and over the fucking sh shoulder shot. So there must be some like lines or, or some fighting something. You know well, what I'm saying? Probably, yeah. It's not going to be something simple, I don't think. I mean. Yeah. You all right there, Doc? You having a seizure? You're doing your Michael yeah. J. Fox impersonation. What's going on? Yeah, just uh, trying to readjust this shit because my computer's telling me. Gotcha. Yo. Yeah. So. If he's coming back, it's going to be full on. It's going to be full on something. It's not going to be. Uh, you know, just a one shot cameo where they see just like, you know, a corner of him or just a face. It's going to be some bullshit where they're, they're flashing back, hopefully, to see how that dark saber falls into the hands of um, of uh, uh, Moff Gideon. Well, go ahead. What are you going to say, Spiro? No, nothing. I wasn't going to. OK. Say well, here's, here's something scenario. that I, I heard two things. I heard after this is I heard there's going to be a. A follow-up to Rebels, right, where it's going to be Sabine, Ahsoka, and Rex on the lookout or on the hunt. The uh, what the hell was that? Like it's computer, music. My computer restarting again. Oh. Uh, uh, do you, do when you take the blue pill, does the same music comes on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sure. Hello, honey. <laughs> I'm here for you, honey. Uh, is this kosher enough for you? Anyway, so uh, yeah, we're idiots and assholes. I get it. What do you expect, guys? It is what it is. Anyhow, um, deal with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly um, what I was saying was that. The Rebels are going to get a, not a sequel, but a follow up show showing the adventures or the hunt or the mission of Ahsoka, Rex, and uh, Sabine looking for Ezra, right? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, did you say that this is going to be a separate show? Or, or yes, it's gonna separate be? show. Okay, all right. But I heard two, two conflicting stories. The first story I heard was that, uh, let me get the website name. On uh, the direct.com, they're saying that the rumors uh, Rebel sequel, I guess they're calling it a sequel to Rebels, which it technically is, will have Clone Wars animation style very similar to the last season in the four episodes that yes. we just saw of the Clone Wars. But today I saw a video by uh, Star Wars. What's the guy? That you know, Spiro. Star Wars, uh, he has that uh, soft voice. He sounds kind of feminine. He repeats himself in the videos. Mike Zero? 
No, 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 no. He has like a like a like a like a very like a like a light voice. Oh man. Uh, oh, is, is it is it Star it's not Star Wars explained, it's the no. st uh, stupendous wave. Stupendous, stupendous wave. wave. Right? There we go. Yeah. No offense to the guy. Uh stupendous <laughs> wave. I don't want to come off like I'm hating on the guy. I just he has a very soft tone, feminine type of voice. It's not very grizzled or you know, tell no large marsh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. <laughs> but he says he said he saw he had information that Ahsoka, Sabine, and Rex are only going to be in one episode, maybe one shot in one episode of uh, season two. But it's going to lead to a spin-off live action sequel to Rebels, where they're going to be casted looking for Ezra, but it's going to be a live action series, not animation. And supposedly Rosario Dawson... Her contract that allegedly she signed with Disney and Lucasfilm states that she's going to be on for multiple shows and multiple appearances. So this is all rumor and speculation, but it's speculation with responsibility, not none of this, you know, <laughs> let me just make shit up on the fly so I can get clicks and views. But what do you guys think? Would you rather see an animation Rebels? Sequel or a live action? Uh, listen, I'm I'm uh, knee deep in season one of Rebels right now, and it's great. I love it. And honestly, the animation is fantastic. It plays well in animation. But if they give us a follow up to it in live action, please bring it on because live action to me always better than animation. So two questions then. What, Spirit, what about you? Live action or would you rather see? Uh, a continued version of animation, but more realistic animation like Clone Wars was. Bro, just give me more fucking Star Wars, bro. That's Amen. that's really yeah, the main baby. thing. Oh my brother. But Testify. Um, testify. You know what, man? I if they're gonna do animation and they do it like Clone Wars and Rebels. Bring it on. But I got to say, man, uh, what they've done in live action with fucking The Mandalorian, if they, you know, if, if they give us that, bring that shit on. I mean, it's, yeah. again, just give me more fucking Star Wars, man, you know? The kicker, if it is live action, they name the people, right? Uh, Ahsoka, Sabine, and uh, Rex, who will be on the mission looking for Ezra. Ezra disappears. Uh, Doc, cover your ears because this is going to be a spoiler for Rebels. Ezra, Ezra disappeared with Thrawn. We know that. Okay, good. Who would you want? Who would you want Ezra to be played by in live action? And who would you want Thrawn to be played by in live action? Okay, so uh, can, can I answer Ezra? Sure. Yeah. I like that kid from uh, Stranger Things. Uh, you know, Wolf Hard Cock, whatever his name is. Wolf. Uh... Wolf's Bane, a hard penis. Uh, I, I, what's his name? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I know you're talking about it, but I think he'd make a nice uh, young Kylo Ren instead. Yeah, that, but that's that, just that me. Would work, that would work, too. Who, who is the that? The from Stranger Things. The one who Wolf, falls in love with Eleven. Wolf hard something. I'm the sure. annoying Wolf, guy? The annoying face guy? They're all annoying face. They're kids. The retard-looking guy? Who? No, 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 no. The, the, guy, the main guy who falls oh, in love okay, with okay. Eleven. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. Right. He was also an it. I guess so. Right. I didn't see it. I only saw the original. Good movie. Good movie. And what about um, Thrawn? Ooh, Thrawn. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> how about uh, Willem Dafoe? Hmm. I was going to say, I forgot his name, but what about the guy from Mad Men? Hell? Oh. The yeah, Ham, yeah. Ham, John, John Ham, yeah. Ooh, I could definitely see him as I mean, as Thrawn. All that shit, you know, yeah. I, you know, you know who I want to pick for for Thrawn? It's a stretch, but I would love to see if it does happen. Christian Bale. Oh shit! Okay. You know? Yes. All right. Christian Bale as Thrawn. You know, and Ooh. as far as Ezra, because of the age and the time lapsing now. Uh, Keanu Reeves is Ezra. 
Oh, he's going to be a lot older, eh? Yeah. But isn't he playing... Isn't he playing Revan? Oh, shut up. <laughs> you fucking Revan. Revan's not <laughs> canon, kid. You can't Yo, play come Revan. He's not canon. All right. I mean, you know... I'm not going to go down this fucking whole thing, but come on, man. They keep dropping hints, man, Le- left and right. It, it was in Clone, Clone Wars. It, it was in fucking this. It was in that. It was in... Anyways, the show goes on, yes. Uh, who would my choice be for fucking Ezra, man? I don't know, man. It, you know, he, he kind of has that fucking Aladdin look. So, I don't know. You know, maybe some Bollywood kid, you know? Well, he's not dark skin, is he? Yeah. Oh, I'm so, but tanned, olive skin, Mediterranean. Oh, I think like him a Greek kid. Yeah. Okay. There, there we'll, get, we'll get John Stamos to play him. There we go, Uncle <laughs> Uncle Jesse. <laughs> um, you know, I, you know what I you know want to hear something? I saw a coming attraction, a coming tra- a trailer to a movie right now that's coming out. It's called I forgot what it's called. Oh shit. Um, but Kevin James plays the heel, plays the heavy in the movie, who's a Nazi, and he's and it, it, it's he's going after a family and moving to a house because he wants to pick up a key, and the, this girl's supposed to stop him and his crew. So it's like Home Alone, but Home Alone with Nazis, and the Nazis being played by Kevin James. It looks weird, but not bad. It just it's interesting. But it's cool to see him diversify his acting. And he's not playing Paul Blart, mall cop. He's just playing a skinhead a Nazi. You know what I mean? Now he's the bad guy. Say hello to the bad guy. So, Doc, you have any news or rumors you, or speculation you want to talk about? Rumors, news, and speculation. Um, let's see. So I got a couple more topics we can touch on. We talked about Sabine, which is, uh, again, an interesting thing because they keep dropping names that, that are coming through. We talked about... My boy, uh, tomorrow. Um, what else? Uh, there was an article dropped recently. I sent you guys uh, from one of the Disney higher, one of the Star Wars higher ups that said that, you know, despite the fact that we have a canon and non-canon universe, you know, whatever's in your brain, you can make canon. It's not a big deal. Uh, Revenant is canon. Because, Boom. Thank you. Because it's all just make up any, it's all just make believe anyway. So it's you know, whatever you want to make canon, make canon. I said to myself, Spiro right now is naked, standing in his bedroom on top of his fucking bed, holding his balls with one hand and his penis with the other, and just goosh, 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 goosh all over the place. Like Herb Abrams. <laughs> like Herb Abrams, exactly. Herb Abrams from, from, the, from, the, U, from the UWF. Covered in uh, covered in Vaseline and cocaine and cowboy boots. I Go, just watched that tonight, by the way. I watched that yesterday. It was actually pretty good. It was ridiculous. <laughs> what a hell of a promotion! I wish I was around to capitalize on it. Um, you you wouldn't got paid. Um, as a well, whatever. Um, the. Uh, that makes no sense. That's like, hey, guys, uh, everyone gets a trophy. doesn't matter if you win or lose. Uh, everyone gets a chance to bat. Everyone's on the team. No, dude, it's canon. What's canon is canon and counts. What's not canon is not canon and doesn't count. Now, the reason why they did this with the EU is because the EU is a freaking mess. It was, a, it was uh, just a disaster as far as storyline and trying to put things together in a certain sequential order certain things contradicted other certain storylines and you elsewhere and multiple uh multiverse in star wars it would ruin the whole platform so they had to do it was a hot mess you know so look at the end of the day Disney controls the the canon because they paid $4 billion for it, like a bunch of marks that they are. And now they're making money over it, off of it, excuse me. And Revan's still not canon. So it is what it is. You know know what? I got to say, man, I have to agree. You know, uh, see, he agrees. Revan's not canon. He is canon. They're just not saying it yet. But listen, man, you know, that was such. 
to me, that answer that he gave about it could be whatever you want. I, th- I feel like that was almost a fucking dick answer, man. It's like, no, what? asshole. You know, what? like you said, what is canon is canon. And that's that. You know, whether or not who I think is canon or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is there should be an established canon. And, you know, that's that should be it. All right. And I agree the fucking EU became a fucking mess and um i like the fact that they can okay so there's canon but i like the fact that there's the eu that's not canon that they can go back to the well so to speak and pick things to like enhance a fucking story you know but yeah man don't don't go telling people that canon is whatever you fucking make it because then it's gonna you know the, the fucking fandom's gonna start fighting all over again and we don't need that shit listen okay? they never stop fighting they fight over everything that's the first thing so look here's the issue you give the power to the fans you let the inmates run the asylum you're gonna get nothing but utter chaos you're gonna get anarchy you're gonna get cats living with dogs you're going to get all these crazy nonsensical things. You're going to get Chuchi in uh, N.A. and A.A. He won't be touching the Yayo no more. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get Homeboy 88 getting his GED and working in an office in a cubicle as opposed to selling f- oranges on the freeways wearing chanclas. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. You can't, you can't just do that. It's, an Im- it's not balanced. Then Thanos is going to come and mess everything up anyway. So we don't need that, you know? Yeah. But look, one thing that is canon is Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill. And he made his rounds recently. And he was saying that the rise of Skywalker was bittersweet. On Monday, May the 4th, a.k.a. Star Wars Day, it looks like Mark Hamill is celebrating all month for the third year in a row. The actor likes to take each day of the month turn it into another Star Wars pun or saying, yesterday was the ninth. This is when the article from comicbook.com came out. So the actor decided to pay tribute to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which is also known as Episode 9. In the actor's post, he confirmed once again that the movie marked his final time playing Luke Skywalker. May the ninth be a bittersweet episode, knowing it was the last time I would ever play Luke. Hashtag, bye bye Skywalker. Hamill wrote, you can check out the tweet, which includes a photo of Force Ghost Luke below. So, what do you guys think on, on his little uh, bittersweet tweet? Well, listen, we all know Mark likes to get on his soapbox and, you know, talk whatever it is. And uh, is is this something that came from Disney saying that they're not using Skywalker anymore and they're putting a nail in that coffin? Or is this coming from him saying that he's not going to ever reprise the role? So, um, Either way, uh, money talks. So, you know, if they ever need him to come back for whatever it is, for however it is, I'm sure if they, as we said before, back up the Brinks truck, Mark Campbell will be back in action. Yep. I, I agree, man. Listen, and you know what? Money talks, but who's to say they won't you know, cast somebody to play a young Skywalker or a fucking baby Ooh. Skywalker in a flashback or, or, or in some kind of a, a, a prequel. I mean, you know, I, I think, listen, man, I fucking love Mark. I love Mark when he's not talking about fucking politics and shit. But to say that nobody's ever playing Luke again, I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't bet any anything on that, you know? Yep. Listen, I, I'm in agreement with you. Uh, it's Disney's. You know, would they be disrespecting his legacy if they throw somebody in the mix and to do it? I think some people would. I think some fans would be outraged the fact that they recast somebody in it. But it all kind of depends on the situation. If they go back, like we've said before, and do this, um, do this. Uh, you know, through the years, Luke Skywalker series, which I think would be awesome. Uh, they have to gonna rec- recast somebody unless they do the de aging technology, which sounds pretty fucking expensive for every goddamn scene. So my guess is that you know they'll just uh, get somebody new to do it, 
and then go from there, which, you know what? I'm kind of okay with. Uh, give me some more Luke Skywalker. Well, there's also rumors and speculations, and you could take this with a grain of salt. This is more on the uh, hearsay spectrum. The female-centric cast for this female-centric uh, Russian doll Disney Plus series is supposed to be a series about Hera Syndulla, General Hera Syndulla from Rebels, oh, live nice. action. And supposedly Leia is in it, but they're going to recast her, which I don't think is going to happen. This is what puts up the red flag, in my opinion. Um, the, Ma, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mon Mothma's in it. Uh, so, who knows? I don't know if supposedly this is Sabine Wren supposed to be in it. So, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen, but it does look like they're going to be shying away a lot from animation and, and venture more into this live action. Especially since now Favreau found a way to save a ton of Scott Hall with this new technology that he uses as the background drop scene thing. And they don't have to go to different set uh, locations. They can just film in a soundstage. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Good talk. Well, uh, <laughs> your, your, your responses weren't over. But I, do, I will tell you something that is over. The next segment that we do. And it's called... I bet you guys can't guess what it's called out there in uh, Star Wars uh, land. Uh, mm. It is called... Over is who? That is right. That is right. See, Spiro is speaking in Yoda, Yoda ease. So, it's who is more over. Now, before you get your panties in a bunch, and you ask Doc, here, here's my panties, Doc. You can have them. Look, he's licking his lips. Uh, the word over is wrestling lingo meaning being popular so when you're a good guy wrestler you're known as a baby face and you're popular as a baby face you're over with the fans as a face or a baby face that means they're going to pay a lot of scarol to come see you wrestle they kick the crap out of the villain or the heel when you're over as a heel or popular as a heel people are going to pay a lot of scarol to come see you lose and get your butt kicked from uh, from the good guy. So, with that being said, we compare two aspects of Star Wars lore every week, and we, we compare them and see who's more over with you guys, but also who's more over with us. So, with that being said, it looks like Doc got thrown off the call. No, no, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, Can you're still here. There he is. The so, Doc... Is my internet went down in the house, so I'm uh, scrolling through Facebook to look at the polls right now. So don't mind me. I'm here. All no right. Offense. Well, Doc, let, let the fans know who our participants are this week and who's more over. So, again, the NFL, you know, breaks the fucking ground. And we do what we want to do because this is where the big boys play, huh? Goddamn um, right. We got, a, we got a request from a fan. Pop it down. Who was that fan? I can't remember what his name was. Hold on, I'll get it right now. Tom, Tom, Dick, and Harry, something I don't know, but they no, wanted no, to do no, no. Terry Patrick. Oh, Terry, hey baby, they no. wanted to do a... Michael Vorjic. His name was Michael Vorjic. Michael Vorjic. They wanted to do a, uh, a who's more over with some sound effects. So initially, we picked a lightsaber sound effect, which is obviously classic. Which is and his. Was... Wait, wait, hold on. Let's give this guy credit. He wanted yes. to do the lightsaber sound effect versus the. Rumble sound effect of when the dark side users use the force. Now, I wasn't sure what that was because I don't recall ever hearing a certain rumble or hum when the dark side people use the force. Uh, I went back and listened to a couple of, you know, clips here and there in the movies. I didn't hear it. So I didn't want to make this too one sided. So the three of us collectively got together, took our fans' request. And tweaked it a little bit because we listen to you guys, the fans, all three of you guys. We totally listen to you guys, and we made it our own. So, Doc, let them know what we're comparing this week. So, this week we're comparing the lightsaber sound effect, the ignition and the hum, versus the TIE fighter screech. All right, Doc. So, let, let us know. What do the polls say? And uh, 
what does the Facebook page say and all that stuff? So here we go. We got uh, some comments. John M. Wright. This one is tough, but the lightsaber sound is so iconic. Sometimes the tie sound gets lost in the scene, whereas the lightsaber never gets lost. Also, remember Ray's lightsaber beat Kylo's tie. Oh, that's a good point. Holly Garland. The tie screech is usually accompanied by, accompanied by a wicked pew 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 barrage. <laughs> I couldn't vote against that even if I wanted to. Deploy the garrison. Chuchi Figueroa says, is this a poll? Michael Vorgnick, who actually was the one who instigated this, uh, this poll here. Lightsaber all day. So if we go to the polls, we're taking a look at lightsaber versus TIE Fighter Screech. What do you guys think won? Saber. Lightsaber. Yep. So we got lightsaber wins 80 to 20. Wow. wow. Nice. That, that's, that's a lot more than I thought it would. Yep. All right. Well, let's go through the emails unless you guys want to go first. We could do that, I guess. You guys want to change it up? Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's keep them on their toes, like they say. All right. So, so, so Star Wars is... Uh... Never heard of it. Is is never heard of, is one of the most amazing sound effects, you know, uh, movie magic ever. The amount of sound effects that came out of Star Wars are legendary. I mean, we can sit here and talk about Vader's breathing. We can sit here and talk about the 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 Death Star explosion. You're echoing, kid. Uh, um, the lightsaber. Uh, which is probably the most iconic sound that we've ever heard in the Star Wars universe. It's the second you hear that, it's you know exactly where you are. When my when I get a text message, all you hear is the uh, ignition of a lightsaber because that's my that is my text message ring. Wouldn't it be more like vroom. anyway? Pew, pew, pew. You know, every every impression sounds like Watto. I just hear Watto. I don't know why. Uh, but that tie screech, Whoa, dude. That, that tie screech is special, man. It's like, it's 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 one of the most. It's almost like nails on a chalkboard the first time you hear it. It's so like guttural and visceral, um, and it's also unmistakable. And I, like Holly said, followed by a pew 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 pew. Um, but if you're looking at just classic, immediate recognition, baby, it's the lightsaber. You, that, that, that ignition and that hum and the fact that they're able to take different lightsabers and make them sound just slightly different from each other is also like super special. Um, the guys who did the sound, I'm sure they won an Academy Award. I'm 99.9% .9 sure they did for it because the sound editing on that on Star Wars is fantastic. Agreed, okay. brother. So, so you lightsaber, me. lightsaber. Okay. Uh, let me go right. next. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick <clears> the <throat> saber. I'll pick saber all day, every day. Um, like Doc says, you, you, every time you hear that sound, you know exactly what's going on. But the same thing goes for the Tie Fighter. Uh, same thing goes for them when they go into hyper hyper speed. Vader's breathing. There's a plethora, a smorgasbord of epic sounds that can never be forgotten. It's embedded in your brain after you hear it the first time. It's not like you hear it and go, oh, I wonder what that, what is that movie from? You know, dead center in the middle of your medulla oblongata that it's right from Star Wars. Now, here's a little history fact. Since the Greeks invented history, I'll enlighten our uh, moof-milking fans uh, about some history. So the sound designer Ben Burt created the distinctive TIE fighter sound effect by, co by combining an elephant call with a car driving on wet pavement. How crazy Jeez. is that? Wow. What makes I mean, you say, I mean, hey, I'm going to wake up out of bed today, get my coffee, and take this elephant sound I heard from Dumbo or whatever, National Geographic. And oh, what was that sound outside? Oh, wait a minute, let me combine the two. So it's wild, man. I mean, the those guys, the shit they were doing, how they were doing it. Eh. Do you think they just sat there and just like just threw shit in the wall and be like, fuck it, let's just see what happens with this? Yeah, fuck yeah probably. Just fuck it, let's see what happens with this. Let's well, just it seems this like and that. It. And it's just like, hold on because... a second. The lightsaber, 
the lightsaber sound effect was developed by sound designer Ben Burt as well as a combination of the hum of an idling interlock motor in an aged movie projector and an and interface caused by a television set on a shieldless microphone. Whatever that means. So it was a combination of a hum of the hum of idling interlock motors in an aged movie projector okay. and interface caused by a television set on a microphone that they had a microphone on that was shieldless. Um Here's here, Doc. Jesus I'm gonna send Christ, man. I'm gonna send you a clip. Maybe you could put it in the description of this guy describing where he got the sound effect from. I'm not gonna play it for the fans, cause fuck the fans. Uh, and I'll do the same thing for the Tie Fighter. But uh, but I'm picking the saber, like I said. Uh, the Tie Fighter is an amazing sound. Can never be duplicated. But I'm a big mark for the Jedi more than so far than the ships. So that's why I'm picking this the the saber. Nothing wrong with that. Not at all, man. Guys, you know, uh, you 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 guys just hit it, man. I mean, um, Star Wars is definitely known for the various recognizable, instantly recognizable sound effects from Vader's breathing to the Tusken Raiders, the fucking uh, oh, yeah, arr, 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 yeah, I love it. Fuck, arr, exactly. Arr, arr. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the pretty fucking, good, dude. The fucking siren, the fucking uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? The siren, Tuscan Raider, Vader, Utini. There's something else, but uh, anyways, man. Um, yeah, I you know that sound of the lightsaber is probably the most. No, I would have to say Vader's is the most recognizable, but after that has to be the fucking lightsaber. And, you know, that other sound, the rumble, the one that was originally, you know, asked us to, to do, that sound is also over with me. I never believe I've ever heard uh, a sound associated with a force, but that dark side rumble is definitely over with me as well. The fucking TIE Fighter, you guys know I fucking love that sound, man. That's in, in my top three sounds. So what do you pick? You know, um, well, I'm gonna pick the fucking saber, and especially the updated sounds. Now there's more. Uh, there's you know with the new technology, there's more bass. It's more crisp, and you know uh, I fucking love the way Kylo's uh, uh, sounds. Uh, oh, oh crackle. crackle! That crackle. Yeah, exactly. That that fucking crackle is is sick, man. But I'm gonna go with lightsaber all day and night. Well, listen. This is this is a hard thing to do to pick out uh, these these uh, sound effects. You know, if we had to pick out our favorite, it's gonna take some time. You know what I mean? Because you got the pew 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 sound effect. You got Vader. You got you know. We just mentioned a few just off the top of our heads, and there's many more to pick from. I mean, there's those ses those seismic or whatever they're called charges. Seismic charges. Yep. You know. Uh, just so many stuff that you can listen to that makes you go, ah, oh, just take all my money. But let's see what the fans have to say. We have an email from Moises Sandoval, a.k.a. Uh -huh. Homeboy88, and it's called The LFO. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's up, my Star Wars homeboys? I would like to say I will do a mini podcast of The LFO and put it on my YouTube channel. Wait a minute. You have a YouTube channel? Yes, what do yes you, he does. What is it, all orange uh, commercials? <laughs> He's trying to get over with Tropicana? <laughs> yeah, what? Mini uh, one of the topics will be, was Princess Leia raised Puerto Rican? Well, Jimmy Smith is Puerto Rican, and the one fucking Latino in Star Wars has to <laughs> drive a what? A flying lowrider. <laughs> Shake my head. <laughs> Chuchi, get the yayo. Oh, and if he doesn't do it with me, I'll change the name to the NHO. Guess why? Peace out, homeboys. I'm losing reception on the freeway underpass. GGP, you prick. Bro. So, wait a minute. So, if Chuchi doesn't do it and he's the NHO, what's the NHO? I'm imagining it's new homeboy order. Probably. Yo, Probably. dude, if those guys got 
together and they started a show, man, I'm all in, man. <laughs> Straight all up. right. So here's a second email. And we do appreciate Homeboy's emails, dude. Right? Uh-huh. I wish all the fans were dedicated to us like, like Homeboy88. Then we'd be kicking the ass of all the other corny podcasts and YouTube shows talking about Star Wars. They're so boring and dry and and they're not entertaining at all. It's just a bunch of geeks sitting around they, going, oh, 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 oh. They never make you laugh. Oh, it's all paint by the number bullshit. Bro, anyway, this is how the, many the, how many podcasts or YouTube shows on Star Wars can you tune in and you could see the host telling his aunt to go fuck herself? Exactly. You bro. know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, the new Force Order is, is and I'm going to fucking bite this. I'm going to be a shark and bite this off. Uh... A legend in the wrestling business, Ugo Savinovich, and say that the New Force Order is the show of a thousand emotions. What other show makes you happy, makes you sad, makes you fucking angry, bro? What other show makes you contemplate fucking suicide? Not that that's a good thing, but what other show makes you makes you feel proud to be a fucking Star Wars fan? That's right. Exactly. There is no other. There is no other show. Anyways, that you know, statement was brought to you by the new force order for motherfucking life. You know, yo, we got almost a thousand fucking followers on Facebook. Where are you, motherfuckers, at, bro? I don't see you on YouTube. I I don't see you Where on fucking you Instagram. At? I don't see you on Twitter. Where are you, people, man? You know, well, it's easy on. for these guys Step to hit like because they know us. That's the problem. They do need to step up. But look, yeah. Moises Sandoval sent an email. Lightsaber hum versus TIE Fighter Screech. Lightsaber hum for show. Remember when I chopped off Doc's arms and legs and dick? Couldn't do that with a TIE Fighter. Okay. <laughs> Doc, it looks like he, he turned you into Anakin. Fucking uh, boxing Doc. Okay. All right, <laughs> next one. From Todd Santiago. I the love co-host. The- of, yeah, of, of the, the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I love the classic Tie Fighter screech, but just the sound of a lightsaber or a laser sword igniting alone is a gish 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 for me. So lightsaber is more over for me. Thank you guys, NFO for life. Uh, Life. Uh. All right. Here's an email from a first time emailer. His name is Timothy Gilby. Hey, NFO guys. This week I'm picking my favorite bedroom boner sound effect, in the, AKA the lightsaber. Come on, guys. I'm sure you have made the noise. Ha 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 ha. Especially <laughs> that perv, Dr. Destroyo guy. I'm just kidding. I added the perv part. NFO for life. Uh. <laughs> oh, so, what's his, his pick? The saber sound. The saber sound. Oh, I, I fucking thought it was going to be me me farting or some shit, you know? Uh, he says so, he does it when he's uh, about to well, get a boner. It, well, listen, if you, uh, if you eat 17 fucking double cheeseburgers, what do you think is going to happen, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got a fucking problem. Jesus Christ. You spear all out, okay? I got a fucking problem. Motherfucker, give me an extra Yo, cheeseburger, me... extra cheese, extra... What? You see, guys, this is, this is what I'm talking about. You know, man, he he's like the Vince McMahon to Road Warrior Hawk right now. Yeah. You see that, man? We are taking a page out of real life and bringing it to you for your enjoyment and your entertainment. I'm going to go climb now the fucking roof of my house and fucking jump off now and shit, you know? Anyways. Well. <laughs> exactly. I'm dead. Let's see what happens. Say. <laughs> Hey, yo. Teach him how to say hey, yo. Hey, yo. How are the how are the three most unorthodox Star Wars podcasters in the galaxy? Uh, I am doing well. How about you, Spiro? How are you doing? I'm doing fucking great, man. How about you, Doc? Would you look in the camera? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm fantastic right okay. now. Okay. Everything is peachy. Just heard L.A. got... Their sentence extended three months. That should mean we will be getting the same here in the Bay in the next week or two. Summer is canceled. Meanwhile, Colorado and Georgia is rolling on. Anyway, what sound is more over? 
Who does not love the sound of a Schwartz lighting up from the ring as Lone Star fights Dark Element? That is an LOD pop from your boy GGP. That was a good statement. An epic scene in many of Mel Brooks' classics, but the fact they use an elephant sound for the TIE fighter gives it the edge for me. Wow, total swerve. All right. Thanks to the fact he likes the... <laughs> Odds is over with elephants, huh? I love it. Did you guys watch Money in the Bank? Climb the corporate ladder. I would like to know your thoughts, likes and dislikes on this. I did not watch it. I hardly watch any wrestling. Would you guys? You guys watch the ladder and Money in the Bank or no? Nope. Okay. Negative. I haven't watched WWE in fucking months. It's. I mean, I watched a little bit of WrestleMania here and there, but otherwise, fucking brutal. Okay. Joke of the week. Ready, boys? Here we go. <laughs> Joke oh, of the boy. week. Still waiting for my stimulus check. Six weeks out. Thanks, fellas. So you're saying the stimulus check is the joke of the week. Yep. <laughs> Waiting for the fucking Donald dollars. Well, fuck, man. If you have to depend on the stimulus check, <clears throat> sorry for you, Hans. But a guy of your caliber, wittiness, sex appeal, you should be uh, be like Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo over there in the Bay Area. Or go to West Hollywood. And get on your knees like Doc used to. Go make some money. Anyway, I digress. So, moving along. Spirit, you have any news you want to share with the people? What I do have is a bonus email. Oh. A bonus email. Please enlighten us. I got to hear this. From the ultimate homeboy. Oh, man. This guy's all over the place. Uh, yeah, bro. This guy gets go. around. He messaged us on like 60 different platforms, this guy. I love I it. I love it. All your fans should be jealous. All you fans out there should take note. This is how you should be interacting with the NFO because... Because of his interaction and because of his wittiness, he got a free T-shirt. Oh, he'll be getting a free T-shirt. We got to send it to him this week. It's coming with and, a stimulus check. <laughs> and and on top of that, the guy's mentioned on this podcast more than anybody else, and he's moreover. So all you freaking uh, uh, scruffy nerf herders out there, you step up milkers. your A game. Whatever that is, I don't know. Step up your A game and start incorporating. Uh, your your time and effort with the NFO so we can have a nice uh, interaction, a discussion, a debate. We'll put you in your place, smack you in your face, and let you know how Doc's dick tastes. Anyway. Oh, so. shit. The man's a poet, man. Awesome. I didn't even know it. Yeah. Let me tell you, man, you guys should definitely be more like Homeboy 88. And uh, here we go. Okay, I can't wait for the next Revenge of the Fifth. Neither can I, but it's going to be Revenge of the Fifth every day. Anyways, what a classic episode. Spiro was on fire, Doc quit, and GGP created the LFO. Yo, Doc quit? Quit the show? Probably. I don't know. Yeah, he didn't quit the show. He was too busy playing with Hank Shaft and painting other people. Well, I quit the show like every week, so it's fine. <laughs> Dude, man, there's this beef here growing. I, I, I don't know. Anyways, Spiro, I'm with you. Fuck E.T., bro. I never liked him. <laughs> I never trusted him. Hey, bro. For for all I know, he got my cousin, Angel Fernandez, killed. Anyways. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Uh, bro, start that show, man. Jesus Christ. Anyways, on my way. Uh, I'm sorry, on May the 4th, all black series figures at GameStop were on sale. Revan was on sale. But I didn't buy him because I don't want non-canon figures in my collection. <laughs> Peace out, homeboys. LFO por vida. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. You're the man, <laughs> homeboy. You're the man. That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Man. Well, listen. I oh, want to bring pop. something to, my, to, to the uh, fans' attention. This was brought to my attention by Spiro. Spiro shared a little article with us from Screen Rant. Star Wars, the weirdest way Order 66 was executed. So I'm going to, unless Spiro, you want to share it with them? Well, it, it, it's, it's a fucking comedy 
it's like if it was written for Seinfeld and shit, you know? Yeah, it's well, like it's, it's the adventures of Tag and Bink. These are the two yeah. stormtroopers that take place in everything in Star Wars history in the movies, but they're always in the background and you don't know they're there. They were actually in Solo. They were the two that were standing on top of the cage really? where Chewbacca and Han Solo were fighting underneath, and yeah. then they fell through. That was Tag and Bink. And they had more lines in the movie, but got cut out. Of course they did. Of course. Studio meddling. Never a good thing. Anyways, you know, somebody should fucking take this and do like sort of a fan film short to it because it, it would be fucking hilarious. But apparently, Order 66 was prematurely ejaculate. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Was <laughs> pre- Order 66 was prematurely... Um, Executed. What do you call it? Executed, yes, thank you. That was the word. Or ejaculated. Um, yeah, sure. It's same shit, right? You, you, I mean, at the end of the day, you do kill babies and shit. So anyways, execute them, yeah. Um, <laughs> Order 66 was prematurely executed uh, one day when a cook or somebody called out a fucking... It went to Dexter's meal diner. Meal yeah, order. Dexter from uh, episode two. Yeah. Um, apparently I didn't read the full article, so if you can tell, I'm trying to fucking tap dance around this shit. But anyways, uh, somebody you know, called you know, out. Okay. Yeah, go yeah, yeah. Go, uh, no, no, go on. I mean, do it, do it the fucking, the right I'll, way. Uh, I'll tell uh, you. I'll right. tell you. So it says right here. You want to do it, doc? Cause I got yeah. it right here. So right. tag, so tag and blink, bink are inside the, uh, Just blink. Dex- bink. That's bink. from X-Men. Yes. <laughs> Age of Apocalypse. Great story. Dexter's diner. Um, and they're talking to Django Fett. And Dexter, who is the cook for the Dexter's Diner, is shouting out orders behind them. And nobody's paying attention. So he's like, order 64. And they're just still having a conversation. Order 65. So having a conversation. All of a sudden, he goes, order 66. And suddenly, uh, for some reason, Tag and, and Bink were dressed as Jedi. I think they were trying to infiltrate something. And Django Fett whips out his pistols and starts shooting at them. And he goes, I don't know, for some reason, I want to kill Jedi. And I like it. And start shooting at them as they're fucking running out of the diner. Oh, shit. Obviously, like Ryan and Revan, <laughs> or Raven, this isn't canon. <laughs> what about Raven? <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny. So, yo, man. Oh, man. It is what it is. It's an, it's an offshoot. It's something I think it came out, what, was it Dark Horse that dropped it or something? Yeah. Dark Horse yeah. You know, so it's fun. Because there's always one thing better than Star Wars. I can't remember what it was. Doc, who was that? Motherfucking Star Wars. Motherfucker. <laughs> really? uh, there was another article that came out that, by uh, Screen Rant that said that there's a theory. Vader was the reason for Palpatine's clone plan. So let's see what it says here. It says Palpatine's plan in Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, seems hurried and only half complete. And it's probably because it was put together at speed when Palpatine sensed Anakin would betray him. Tie-ins have made it clear the Emperor was only researching cloning in the original trilogy era. Around the same time, he appears to have discovered Exegol, which many are saying that in the Aftermath novels, he was feeling a great presence in the outer regions, in the outer rim. Me too. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Waka waka waka, right? In the outer rim, and everyone thought it was snow, but people are saying now it's Exegol that he was that he that he that he figured out what it was. It's reasonable to assume Palpatine realized Vader would betray him, and when he learned that Luke Skywalker, and thus began to prepare for his death, it all went wrong though, with the clone body being unable to properly house the Emperor's spirit. While the rebels proved more competent than Palpatine had expected, Darth Vader's betrayal came too quickly, and the Emperor's plan did not quite work out. Well, you know, sorry about you there, fucking Palpy. You fucking you, you blew the spot, blew the pooch. So sorry about your damn luck. Speaking about blowing pooches, I think it's about that time, that sexy time. Ooh. Turn on. Turn on the red light, tell the kids to go to bed, and oh, there it is. Spiro, hit him with that Barry White. 
It's time for Star Wars Kama Sutra. Ooh, baby. All right, so let's... Sounds like water to me. I don't get it. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, can, can you can you do a scene of Wado and Bib Fortuna having sex? Oh shit. <laughs> uh okay. Uh Wado. Uh, <laughs> something on my mind. Oh my god. That my master said to me that uh I want to tell you, uh, I want to take my Twi'lek hair and rub it against your Toydarian anus. Oh, babe, why don't you tell me this before? Last Saturday, I had two bottles of wine. I drink by myself and try to fuck uh, Shibi Skywalker in the ear. <laughs> Yo, man, we, we need to... We, we need to turn these things in, into, like, shorts, man. You know? Skits. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely, dude. Fucking definitely. hilarious. Uh, <laughs> the Watto <laughs> Shimmy Skywalker short. Uh, uh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my massage up with a Anyway. Here we go. Um, oh, shit. Let's see. What, what episode are we on? 61? No. 62, 62? now. 62. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. So <laughs> <sighs> it's not a good sign, is it? No, this one's called the holiday special. Oh, oh Lumpy. <laughs> it stars B. Arthur and Lumpy. Nice. Really? But if you're a, a historian like me, you'll realize that they never made a B. Arthur figure or a Lumpy figure. So if you look at the photo, it says censored. <laughs> But I'm going to read you the description that our boy S.N. Herder put in there. This position was so bad that we decided to pretend it never happened and to never release it in any format, just like the holiday special, even though it featured B. Arthur doing unspeakable things to Lumpy. Genius. Yeah. That's the, uh, and we call in the business, a, a double entendre, if you will. <laughs> Because they've, they've never released that holiday special in any format, on any platform. I have it on VHS. I bought it on eBay, like, I don't know, 12 You can buy years. it on DVD, too. Is it on DVD? Is it, is it unauthorized, though? It's unauthorized. It's fucking bootleg. Love it. But, uh, yeah, let's... let's, let's uh, you want another let's one? Do, yeah, let's do one that counts. Uh, all right, let's do one that counts. Okay, let's see. That, that didn't count? Oh, it did, it's is... like gravity. <laughs> don't count. Oh. oh! All right, this is a good one. Yeah. Okay, this one's called, and I'm going to let you guess what, what it involves. It's called Works Every Time. <laughs> Billy D. Yeah. <laughs> so, this stars uh, Princess Leia Organa, Aura Singh, Ula, and Lando Calrissian. Well, what do we have here? Well, what do we have here? So, it, uh... <laughs> so... It's Lando walking away from a bed, and on that bed is uh, Aura Singh, Ula, and on the floor is Princess Leia in her slave outfit, and nice. surrounding them is a bunch of empty cans of, you guessed it, guys. <laughs> Coat 45. Coat 45. Awesome. So Lando looks like he's zipping up his zipper on the way out because he just uh, had himself a menage au croix. Um... And not the devil's way either, which is great. Um, <laughs> works every time, baby. Listen, this is Lando. He's the pimp of fucking pimps, man. Dude, he's the fucking best. There's no one better. I watched an episode of Rebels with him. I thought it was great. Yeah, nice. That was Billy D actually doing the voice, too. Of course it was. I need my money, honey. <laughs> you know who else I like? Uh... Uh, from Rebels, they actually did him justice. Um, Tarkin? No, this, well, no, I liked him. I liked him, but I'm always a Tarkin mark. The um, the smuggler, what's his name? The pirate, uh, Alan Card. Who? Oh, okay, he's not canon. Sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't say Revan. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what's his the name? The day's coming, guys. The day's coming. <laughs> um, 
what's the dude's name? I can't remember. It's on the tip of my tongue. He's in uh, huh? Hondo. Hondo Anaka. Yes. Hondo Anaka. He's yeah. awesome in Rebels, dude. He is. Awesome. Yeah. Better than he was in uh, than he was in Clone Wars. Anyway, <laughs> you know, because he used him in Clone Wars. He was cool, but he stole the show, in my opinion, in Rebels. He was awesome. But uh, Doc, I think it's that time. Oh shit. Oh. Kama Sutra? No, no, we done. We did the Kama Sutra. The it's thirty. Reason. It's thirty seconds. We're done. It's just like everything else you do, as usual. As usual. That's it. Your wife said, "Give me six inches." You pumped it twice. You went to bed. Exactly. Th- three times. Anyway, <laughs> hi. Is it, <laughs> is it time? Is it time for Tatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
placeholder in the corner there for his sword, as we're going to see in a second. Um, he's got multiple different fists. I'm just going to pull out one or two of these over here because they're all similar. They've got the typical Boba Fett gloves on them. They're gray and they're uh, green. He's got the gun fist. He's got fist fist. He's got kind of a clenched hand. Of course, you know, he's got to graduate to having the uh, the backpack that clips onto the back right there. The Rising pretty, Phoenix. The Rising Phoenix, which is pretty dope. That goes on the back over there. The missile does not come out, unfortunately. You know, it's always a choking hazard. Um, backpack does clip in, which is pretty awesome. So we got that. He has got the... The Boba Fett blaster that we're so used to. This is his, nice. uh, his heavy cannon that looks very similar to the one from the uh, the movie, but it's a little more box like, so it gives it that old school feel to it, like kind of like you know a homemade weapon. It looks like a Red Rider BB gun. You shoot your eye out, kid. Eye out, kid. So he's also got the sheath and the sword that's kind of going to clip into the the side piece right there. It's a short sword. It's one of those, you know, those mini katanas. Typical for our assassin there, buddy Boba Fett over here. And he also comes with a significant number of little knives and little trinkets and little stuff to kind of, you can see them all sitting inside the yep. tray over there. And my guess is that his knees or his, oh, actually I'm lying, the, the, just like the real Boba Fett, his, the front of his shin guards have little notches that you could actually stick all those little weapons inside of. So he can kind of walk around like he does on his actual armor. He has these little pockets that like, you know, some kind of like key or some kind of lock pick goes inside those little those little sections over there. So he has those from there. It's a great it's a great figure. The the bottom portion of the mask is a little different color than the top portion. It's a little kind of darker than the weathered seafoam green on the top. Um, he's got those little back pieces that hang off. He's got the shin guards over here. He's got those Parachute MC Hammer pants. It's got multiple points of articulation, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. The wrist got swivel up and down and side to side, which is always a treat. The feet, the chest, the whole nine yards. Uh, I give this 9.9 .9 out of 10. Amazing. That's dope. How happy were you when you saw it for 80 bucks? Dude, I fucking, I was, I was at work. And Did you scream like a little schoolgirl? I screamed like, let's go. I was at work and I was not busy, which was great. And I saw the email come through from Bluefin saying that they have all these made the fourth Star Wars bundles. I actually bought another bundle that's coming. It's Kylo Ren like this. It's the First Order Stormtrooper and it's Captain Phasma. So we'll be doing those on a future episode of Tatooine. Um, so I saw it come through. I'm like, oh, it's probably just the new ones. And then they had a they had a double pack. It was Boba and Django for 110, which I was impressed. But actually, I got this one off a. Of, actually, I'm lying. I got this one off a of sideshow. Sideshow had them as well, so I jumped on the sideshow one um, because I didn't know any other company that was going to have them. So I got it off sideshow, and then Bluefin, like two days later, pop pop theirs out and had theirs as well. So, but I already had the Django, so I wasn't so pissed off that I didn't get it for 110. But 80 bucks, man, I was thrilled. Was happy. I'm now my collection is complete. Now I'm contemplating chasing down the rest of the. Stormtrooper variations to kind of complete the whole nine yards of those. But maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. I'm pretty content where where I'm at right now. Do it. Do it, bro. Do it. Do it now. They're fucking nice, man. Yeah, you know? it is dope. I can't wait to set him right next to his daddy. And on the well, heels of him being announced for the new Mandalorian, it was like fate, baby. Yo, well, you gotta well, have fate. He, I'm sorry. What are the odds? I mean, odds. What are the uh, chances? And I, I have a strong feeling that the Mandalorian is going to retcon him to 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 actually be Mandalorian, of course, meaning Jango Fett. I agree. Yeah. You know? yep. Listen, it's possible. I, I think they're going to show some kind of connection between whatever happened and try to get there. So I'm excited. How 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 dope would it be? Listen to this. How dope would it be? And this just popped in my head. Everyone thinks they're going to fight, right? Maybe they might beef a little in the beginning, like like the uh, heavy armor, Jesse Ventura gun-having uh, Vizsla Mandalorian. But then they're going to end up teaming up. He's going to help him. And he's going to look over and see him, and he'll look over, and Boba Fett's going to be like, this is the way. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, goose, 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 goose. <laughs> now, question. I Wait, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you guys a preview of uh, a little bit of next week's uh, Tatooine, okay? Finally. Oh, yo! Look at that package, dude. Look how tiny oh, it wow. is. You it's were buddy. You were not his penis. It's he our buddy. Is. It's our buddy, the child. That's hilarious, man. It is. It is literally. Super, look at that I mean, thing. Look how tiny it is. It's so small. That's what how much does that cost? That was like twelve bucks, I think it was. But we'll talk about the shot next week. That's awesome. Now, we all know Taika Waititi is going. Waititi, to, I love Waititi. Waititi, Waititi <laughs> is going to be uh, doing a film, right? Do you guys think because he's so good with comedy that the film he's going to take is going to be Solo Two, or? Do you think that because of the new or the reintroduction of Boba Fett that it may lead into a Boba Fett film and he might be the one who might be taking it on because it's being co-written by the person who did 1917. Again, I forget her name. I'm sorry. And uh, or do you think that that Babushka lady from the grassy knoll or do you think she do you think uh, it's going to be something totally different, something new and fresh? Hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing them doing solo too, man, to be honest, man. I, I think it, it would be great. You know, but I don't know. Doc? Um, so do we really want to see a comedy-centric Boba Fett movie? I don't really know if I really want to see that. You know, maybe a little bit here and there, but I don't want it, you know, rooted in comedy. I want to see something a little more serious. So, but I think, like, I think having him do solo would be fantastic. I think that would be a great vehicle for him because the comedy in that would fit along with his normal directing skills and talent. So, I think having him do that uh, would be the perfect vehicle for him. Are they going to do that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, I agree with you guys both. Uh, I did the whole comedy of Boba Fett may not fit, but um, again, that's the fun thing about speculating responsibly about Star Wars. We could do and say whatever we want as long as it's in, you know, uh, responsible. Not even, yeah, not even responsible, but just educated you know we're not just throwing shit against the wall see if it sticks you know that i like i could definitely see him do a solo too you know with the fucking tatooine and job of the hut and some comedy but organic comedy like thor had in ragnarok but at the same time i can see the action sequences and maybe some of the the scuzzy Underlife sequences, you know, of the fucking bounty hunter life, thirteen thirteen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Anyhow, I just figured I'd throw it out there. I wanted to get you guys' opinion since you guys know what you're talking about, and that was basically it. So, anything else you boys want to add before we take it home? Hmm. Uh, it was a busy week this week for Star Wars. A lot of great things popped out. A lot of great things are coming through. I got to say, I'm more excited now than I've probably ever been. Yep, same same here, man. A lot of shit came out, like you said. And, you know, again, man, it's just more fucking Star Wars. So as long as there's Star Wars, there's there's going to be us. And as long as there's us, Star Wars will always be getting over with you motherfuckers. Well said. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let them know where they can find you boys at. Find me at Dr. D-R underscore Destroyo. D-E-S-T-R-O-Y-O. Instagram. Alex Royo. Facebook. Alex Royo MD on Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find me on Instagram. Spiro underscore A. You can find me on Twitter. Handsome Reaper. You can also find me in my own fucking show where I fucking pick a topic. I sometimes put it in your hands and I let you pick a topic, and I curse the shit out of whatever motherfucker is the main focus of that topic. And that show is The Rational Rage. You, you guys can check it out. Go to my Facebook page, Rational Rage. I will be sharing links there. I don't want to take up any more of anybody's time because I got shit to do. 
You could find me at Greek God Papadon, Twitter, Greek God Papadon, Instagram, Demetrius Papadon, Facebook, Pro Wrestling Tea Store, Greek God Papadon for all your professional wrestling t shirt needs. Uh, the YouTube page, Greek God Papadon. You can find me tomorrow, 7 15 on Twitch. Uh, with the Conspiracy Horseman. The Conspiracy Horseman podcast is a conspiracy theory slash free thinking slash question the narrative podcast with four professional wrestlers. Myself, Bin Hamin, Stevie Richards, and Big Sal Graziano from the FBI. We're going to have a guest on tomorrow. He goes by the name of uh, Is Just Swamp Gas on Twitter. He's been on the show before. Very highly educated uh theorist and free thinker so it's going to be a lot of fun we'll be talking on uh, a numerous amount of topics and you can catch that at twitch.tv forward slash conspiracy horseman you can catch the three of us most importantly at nfo underscore podcast on twitter new force order on instagram official new force order on facebook the website where you can catch all the old episodes, episodes to our other shows called Mandomania, and the Clone War Report can be found on... Oh, you can also buy merch, which is short for merchandise. Uh, NFO t-shirts, NFO mugs, NFO mankinis, bikinis. Love my mankini. NFO flamethrowers. Hell, you can even buy... Little Guatemalan children with NFO t-shirts shipped to you straight from Guatemala if you want. It doesn't matter to us. We have a connect. It's called Hillary Rodham Clinton. But that's a story for another time. Uh, the website is called newforceorder.com. And most importantly, you can send emails and get a gold star like Homeboy88 or an orange star to be more politically correct. Uh, the email address is newforceorder at yahoo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and your ears. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to entertain you through the aspects of a galaxy far, far away. This has been another exciting, action-packed, news-stacked, totally entertaining end edition of the new, 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 new Force Order. For life. And that's just too motherfucking sweet. Henceforth, execute order N F O. Not LFO, because that's the La Cacarucha Mierda bullshit. <laughs>